Hello dear students. Due to the current scenario of school lockdown, students are not able to access their biotechnology laboratories. For this, we have started a practical series of all the practicals which need to be covered by our class 12 students before their board examinations. In this video, we are going to discuss our first experiment that is use of special equipments in biotechnology experiments. First, let's have a quick introduction. We all know that the wide concept of biotechnology encompasses a wide range of procedures for modifying living organisms according to human purposes, going back to domestication of animals, cultivation of the plants and improvements to these through breeding programs that employ artificial selection and hybridization. Modern usage also includes genetic engineering as well as cell and tissue culture technologies. Biotechnology has applications in four major industrial areas including healthcare, crop production and agriculture, non-food that is industrial uses of crops and other products and environmental uses. A biotechnology laboratory should provide students with the fundamentals of biotech combined with extensive hand-on laboratory experience, facilities and equipments for performing work on DNA, RNA and proteins, their extraction, analysis and storage are the prerequisites of the laboratory. A lab dealing with biotechnology can have several potential dangers also. It is therefore important that you know which equipment to use and how to use it safely. In this activity, you will become familiar with the special instruments you will be working with in your laboratory. But before having a look at all the special equipments, let's first have a quick tour of a well-established biotechnology laboratory. Welcome to our molecular biology lab. Let's go inside. In here is our wet lab. That means that we do all of our reactions involving DNA extractions or RNA or protein work, as well as mixing different chemicals in this room. We have a lot of equipment that we use to spin things down, to mix things up, heat them up, and also just to measure and pour. Every scientist has a set of pipettes that we use to measure out really minuscule amounts of fluid that we can then put into our mini reaction centers like these Eppendorf tubes. Since we work on such a small scale in biology, that's all that's really needed for us to mix our reactions or do our experiments. Also in our lab, we have a variety of different fridges and freezers at negative 20 degrees, four degrees, and in our other room, negative 80 degrees. Different chemicals need to be kept at different temperatures in order to help stop degradation or just to store them and keep them fresh for a certain amount of time. And then if you come this way, this is our gel imaging room. Being molecular biologists and working with such small molecules, we use something called a gel in order to visualize what we're working with. We make them and run them in these different apparatus and we use stains in order to visualize the molecules that we're seeing. Some other machines that we have in this room include our PCR machines, which are basically like Xerox copy fax machines for DNA, our nanodrop, which we use to measure the concentration of what our DNA samples are, and this apparatus, which we use for photography of all of our gels. Welcome to our chemical room, where we store all of the different chemicals needed for all of our different experiments. This is also where we mix all of our different reagents. We weigh certain things out on a scale, and then we use an automated stirring machine to mix in our different powders into liquids. It uses a little stir bar like this and a magnetized bottom. We can crank it up and get things stirring. In here is our tissue culture and bacterial systems. Here's our hood where we keep everything aseptic and clean 
in order to work with bacteria or with very sterile samples. Here are two of our really large negative 80 degrees Celsius freezers, which we use for more long-term storage of DNA or different tissue samples. Over here are our growth racks, where we grow everything from blueberries to basil to hops and different succulents, even Venus flytraps and coleus. We start off tissue culture and plant regeneration by growing our plants in a sterile environment, just like in these little Tupperware containers. This plant is not contaminated by any other bacteria or anything outside in the air. Next, we cut them up into teeny tiny squares and we place them on a plate that has growth medium and different hormones on it to mimic different stages of development and we create something called a callus that is very similar to a tumor or maybe an embryo before it becomes differentiated. Next, we switch to another medium that promotes shoots to grow. On here, we see the brown callus and the shoots that are now growing up out of it. This is so cool because instead of growing plants from a seed like we normally do, we can make a clone of a plant by cutting up a tiny piece of its leaf and mimicking different developmental stages.